Welcome to Seed to Life. I hope you are doing well and keeping safe. If you are in India, I know that many of you are going through a very tough time. My heart goes out to you. My family and I are wishing that the nightmare ends soon. Take extra care of yourself. This too shall pass. Today we will learn some interesting facts about mint and start mint plants from cuttings. We will also see the growing requirements for mint. So let's begin. Mint goes in sweet dishes like chocolates, in refreshing summer drinks, as mint chutney they buddy up with the appetizers and Indian chaat and also make the biryani flavorful. There are at least 25 plus varieties of mints. I think the number is much higher. The most famous ones are peppermint or our regular mint and spearmint. I am growing a number of herbs in my backyard garden and this is a regular mint. The peppermint and this other one with a little bit darker or purplish leaves is chocolate mint. You can see how the plants are growing beautifully. They both have very different flavors. The chocolate mint is much stronger and has a spicier flavor compared to that of the regular mint. It almost tastes like a gum. Last year, somehow, I lost my mint plants during winter. But I had some seeds saved so I tried to germinate the seeds. And I tried it multiple times. But not a single one germinated. Later, I found out that growing mint from seeds may not always work since sometimes the seeds are sterile so they don't germinate. Also, the plants you grow from seeds may not have the same flavor as the mother plant. So you might get some other variety that you don't want. That leaves us with the best option to grow these plants and that is to grow them from cuttings. It is the easiest way. So let's find out some tips and tricks to grow this herb in abundance. Now you might feel tempted to grow mint in the ground. But let me warn you that mint is a very aggressive plant. It not only creeps on the ground but the runners also grow underground and soon you will notice mint plant taking all of your raised bed or part of the garden. Just like grass, mint is very easy to start but very tough to control and remove. So avoid growing it in the bed with other plants unless you want to grow only mint and nothing else. Now let's see when to start mint plants. The best time to start mint plants is early spring or late winter. Mint is quite a frost tolerant plant. It may appear to die during winter but usually comes back in spring as soon as the temperature starts rising up. It is hardy in zones 3 to 8 unless the weather takes an unexpected turn and you have an unusually extreme winter. But even if you lose your plants, no worries. You can easily grow them from cuttings. Mint likes cooler temperatures and grows well in a temperate climate. The optimal temperature is between 55 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. I got this bunch of fresh mint from the grocery store. Pick a bunch that has strong stems like this one. You can see some of the stems are already growing roots from where the leaves are attached to the stems. New leaves also grow from the same spot. Sometimes when you keep these stems loosely covered in a plastic bag in the vegetable section of the refrigerator, they start growing roots. You can use the trick to regrow cabbage and some other vegetables too. You can see here carrots are growing roots. Remove all the bottom leaves from the cuttings except a few, maybe just a pair of leaves on the top and drop the stems in water. Keep them near a window or under a grow light to get some light. You can change the water regularly to prevent the stems from rotting. In about a week, the cuttings start growing roots and you can then plant them in a container. The soil mix for mint has to be loamy, spongy and well draining. Mint loves moisture. The pH should be between 6 to 7 that is slightly acidic. You can add equal parts of peat moss or coco coir with compost and potting soil. For drainage, you can add some perlite and sand to the mix. You can see here I am growing mint in several containers, but this one is growing the best. 
The potting mix is the same in all these three pots. Do you wonder why the plant in this container has bigger leaves compared to the other pots? You can see here the shape of the pot is slightly converging near the opening and that is causing the soil to retain moisture better. These other two containers, they are open. Even though I water them every day, the moisture gets lost and the soil is not consistently moist. Under the rim of the pot, a nice microclimate is created and I believe it allows the runners to grow more upward branches and hence the fuller pot and bigger leaves. And you won't believe it, but this is a simple plastic pot that is used for Halloween decorations. I purchased it after Halloween for some DIY project and it is working great for my mint plants. You might notice that after 2-3 to three months, mint stops growing like it was growing when it was newly planted. What you should do at this time is take the plant out and check the roots. Roots quickly fill up the pot and use up all the nutrition. I take the plant out once it is time for repotting and trim the roots considerably. Then I either repot the plant in a new soil or amend the soil by adding fertilizer and compost to the existing soil and repot it. You can divide the root balls and make multiple plants from the same uh, plant. Mint is a heavy feeder. It loves regular feed of any all-purpose fertilizer, preferably organic fertilizer. I avoid using fish fertilizer for mint because it smells bad for a few days and if I have to make something, then I can't harvest the leaves during that time. Like basil, you need to keep snipping of the ends to make the plant look fuller and well-shaped. The leaves of mint are perfectly placed opposite to each other in pairs. This alternate arrangement gives the plant a very neat symmetric look. The leaves contain volatile oils that give mint that special medicinal aroma. Chewing mint leaves give, uh, gives a cold sensation because mint oil contains menthol. The stems they grow upward and they grow up to the height of 1 to 1.5 one feet. In about 3 to 4 months or as summer approaches, the stems start growing more upwards and they produce flowers. The leaves become smaller and this is called bolting. To delay bolting, you can move the plant in a semi-shade location or under some tree to keep it cool during summer time. That way you can harvest those big leaves for a long time. Once the plant bolts, the leaves become smaller like this basil is doing right now. Mint flowers are a group of flowers in a spike-like structure. They also are very fragrant and they are treats for pollinators. Bees and butterflies do not leave these plants alone when they start blooming. Now you might think that because mint smells so strong, it shouldn't get any pests. But you know what? A number of pests attack mint. I remember one year slugs also infested my mint plants that were growing in the ground. Putting mint in the ground was a mistake and I didn't know it back then. Other than slugs, there are uh, aphids, some caterpillars, nematodes, mealybugs, white flies and spider mites. Mint also gets fungal and viral infections. Keep the soil clean, remove the dead and infected leaves regularly and try to invite beneficial insects in your garden instead of using pesticides frequently, even the organic ones. Remember, we don't want to kill the good insects. Usually, I do not rush to apply any pesticides because beneficial insects follow the pests and that is how I see different types of insects in my backyard. For harvesting mint leaves, instead of taking out individual leaves, you can just pinch off the new tops or prune the stems regularly as you need the leaves. New leaves will keep growing. Now let's see some health benefits of mint. Peppermint leaves are used as a traditional remedy for insomnia. About an ounce of leaves are boiled in water and the decoction is used as a bedtime tea for sleep troubles. Mint oil is also a traditional remedy and used for relieving body pains and also stomach pain due to colic. Mint is believed to improve digestion and mint leaves are used in many summer drinks and chutneys. Mint is an appetite stimulant. Mint leaves are part of Indian chai masala. Both fresh and dried leaves are used to flavor Indian style hot tea. Mint is a natural mouth freshener. Chew on mint leaves and you don't need the store bought mouth fresheners. And that's it for now. I hope you find this video useful. If you decide to grow some mint, 
A big thanks for watching my videos. Please subscribe to my channel Seed to Life and share my videos. Media links are posted in the description. See you again. Bye.